is most definitely at hand. Well, definitely. One thing you have to say of Eastman, there's a stamp of quality. Another thing it does is a little uh, taste of quality, the way he throws punches, the way he moves around. Everything he's done in his career, he's done at his own pace, seemingly in third gear. We've always assumed he has a top gear, we've never seen it because he's never needed it. But I think he's going to need it tonight because if McCracken is fired up the way I expect him to be, Eastman will need a top gear tonight to take his titles back home with him. So tonight we'll find out, does he in fact have a top gear? Lethargic and languid. He climbs into the ring to a chorus of boos here. In London, very few people follow Howard Eastman, I think, because he's that strange character. But he really can fight. And this is the acid test for him. Let's have a look at how they line up. The tail of the tape, McCrack on the older by two years, could be vital. He's got the slight height advantage. He was bang on the weight. Eastman weighed 11, seven and a half first time, then came back at 11, five. That's strange. McCracken with a reach advantage. Look for his orthodox jab. McCracken debuted 10 years ago. Eastman, a professional for seven years. McCracken, 34 fights of 31, slightly more experienced, but rusty. More rounds box, knockout percentage. Well, Howard Eastman, definitely the puncher. Rounds scheduled, eight apiece. Rounds completed. McCracken, should it go long, look for that. He's had more knockdowns, four, but more against. Eastman never, ever been knocked down. And the odds on the fight, most anticipated British fight of the year, Eastman, three to one on. McCracken, nine to four against, and 33 to one, the draw. And who'd bet against that, really? Ladies and gentlemen this is the main event the fight of the night Panax promotions proudly presents 12 rounds of boxing for the british and commonwealth and vacant european middleweight championship sponsored here by maxi muscle britishboxing.com secondsout.com and giorgio and a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on sky sports you've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business all the officials have been appointed by the ebu the fight supervisor is mr simon block of england steward in charge is mr charlie charles of england our matchmaker mr chris sanagar of chris sanagar of bristol and our timekeeper at the bell is michael mccann our three scoring judges all from England, John Keane, Larry O'Connell, and Terry O'Connor. The referee in charge of the action, and one of the leading referees in the world today, is Mr. Dave Paris of London. They are the officials, and here are the contestants. Firstly, and introducing to you, fighting out of the blue corner, he's wearing the blue trunks, trimmed with white, and way in at 11 stone Bringing a 34 fight record, 33 wins, 21 inside the scheduled distance, and just one defeat. He comes to the ring as the former undefeated British and Commonwealth champion. Would you please welcome the Pride of Birmingham, Rock of And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the white trunks, tripped with yellow, and weighed in at exactly 11 stone and 5 pounds. He has a perfect, unblemished professional record of 31 contests, 31 wins, 28 inside the scheduled distance. He comes to the ring as the reigning and defending British and Commonwealth middleweight champion. Would you please welcome from Fantasy, the Fantasy Bomber, Howell. Sky fans, here we go then, 12 rounds of boxing for the British and Commonwealth and vacant European middleweight championship. Dave Paris with instructions. Okay, boys, I spoke, stand up, son, when I'm talking to you. Come on, come and stand, both of you, come and stand together. I spoke to you in a gesture. Remember, punch with an upper part of the glove. If one of you goes down, the other guy with the furthest reach of the corner. Break when I tell you to, defend yourself at all times. Shake hands, boys. Well, they shake hands. 
Where's the needle? It doesn't matter now, they're in the ring. The personalities are chalk and cheese, the styles almost as varied. The tall, orthodox, textbook McCracken and the laid-back, lethargic, frustrating Eastman, who, when moving up in gears, looks explosive and frightening. Ring rust for McCracken. Has Eastman been carefully matched? Who has the added ambition? Who can box more sensibly and let the passion of the occasion and the lack of love between them overcome this? It's a fast and hard start, and immediately Dave Paris calls them together. Well, immediate aggression from Eastman. He has a point to make. I think he's, he wants to intimidate McCracken. We'll see if that's going to work or not. McCracken forced to hold straight away the first bell. Eastman wanted to go straight in to McCracken. There's a lot of pent-up frustration and aggression that we may see come out of the Battersea Bomber tonight. Well, whatever plan McCracken had to run to the ring, he can forget it, because all he can do now is react to what Howard Eastman is doing. Eastman has decided toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as soon as the first bell sounded, he was off the stool there. So McCracken's just going to have to react to that. One of those fascinating fights with so many questions to be answered. And Eastman is going straight for the jugulus. And McCracken is having difficulty reacting to this. Got to try and get his jab out and keep Eastman at bay, who often is such a slow starter, the elusive Battersea fighter. Not tonight. Look at how his feet are planted, Jim, and the jab raking out. Yes, yeah, these are not range finders he's throwing, these are full-powered shots. Maybe he's, uh, McCracken, maybe just cover up a little bit, just catch the punches. Just well of the storm, because this won't last forever. But he's trying to draw McCracken into a fight, and McCracken's obliging at the moment, which is not a good plan. Is this right from Eastman? He's got to make it work early because McCracken has the experience of going later on in a fight. A decent chin, McCracken, but he has been floored three times. Keith Holmes had him down early on in their WBC clash over in the Wembley Arena back in April last year. Good left hook from Eastman just squeezing between the hands of McCracken. He's having some trouble getting his boxing off. That's a bit better. Got to find distance. He just wants that chin down and his defence is nice and tight. But it was obvious that Eastman wouldn't keep that pace going. It's not his normal boxing style. He's like thinking he's a smooth performer. But uh, McCracken is through that little storm, so time to settle down now. Now he's letting McCracken come to him. Now, the odd Eastman you've seen straight away from the first bow. McCracken already looks reddened around the ribs, as though he's done four or five rounds. I think that was just getting a foothold, a little bit of intimidation going on there in the first round, to be honest. But again, I don't think that will typify the fight. I think they'll both settle down. You see the, the smooth Howard Eastman picking his shots. That's what he's good at. He's an angry man, Howard Eastman, but could that unsettle him? I don't really think so. I think really he was making a point to McCracken in the first round. He was just trying to intimidate him. It's a little, little bit of psychological warfare, if you like. They're both punching around behind the head here. A little bit of needle. This is just silly. I'm sure that we've got a strong referee tonight. I'm sure he'll knock that out of him. So Howard Eastman takes a deep breath, relaxed, and comes out for the second round. Will he push McCracken back again? With the fire he did in the first. Good left hook, look solid punches from Howard Eastman. There's a cut already on the forehead of McCracken. Is this a step too far for the Birmingham fighter who's been training other fighters and has a career in that now too? 
McCracken struggling to contain Eastman at the moment. Backing off, I don't think it's going to work. He's going to have to come forward into the lines then. Maybe easier said than done. I think he's going to have to, to get the first move made here. He cannot react. He's not quick enough to react to what Eastman does. He's going to have to lead off himself, tighten up, and try to back Eastman up. Eastman just picking out the jab and looking for the left hook, which has really reddened the right eye of Robert McCracken. And with a cut on the far, he doesn't look quick enough at the moment, McCracken. I wonder whether the weight thing was an issue last night. Eastman looks so edgy, scaling 11, 7 and a half. He said that he had a couple of sets of scales and he just miscalculated it, went for a run around Hyde Park and he was fine. Came back at 11, 5. That's all it's been, Adam. The fact that on the day before the fight, a fighter can take two and a half pounds off. He does not have weight troubles. And he's weighed in at 11 stone 8 for, for a couple of non-title fights recently. He doesn't have weight worries. I think it was just a miscalculation. So I don't expect it to, to be an issue here. He's probably the stronger middleweight in there. Although McCracken has also had difficulties coming down. Very drawn when he scaled for the Keep Holmes fight last year and he's eating up some of these jabs before coming back with one or two of his own see he's got the center of the ring which is good news for McCracken he's not been pushed but he cannot afford to let this man back him up gain that left hook following the prodding jab of the so-called Battersea bomber in the white and yellow trunks another set of shorts for Howard Eastman, changes every single fight. They match his dyed beard, which Robert's brother Spencer said he should have shaved off to help him make the weight. Eastman a little bit more relaxed, that's his normal style, he's looking more relaxed. McCracken just a little bit tense at the moment. As he seems to take everything at his own pace, Howard Eastman. The one fighter that did make him look slightly silly at times was Sam Solomon. But then Solomon's a tricky customer. Certainly was a big night of World Championship Boxing Saturday night in Las Vegas. Prince Nazim against Marco Antonio Barrera for the IBO's featherweight title. Billed as Nazim's toughest test so far. If you missed this classic between two of the world's best pound for pound, a special Skybox office encore presentation tonight from 10. Call 08705-800-888. British Commonwealth and vacant European middleweight titles on the line. The 11 stone 6 trio. The champion at British and Commonwealth level is Howard Eastman. The challenger for all three, Robert McCracken. Eastman has got a foothold from the start. What can McCracken do? Has he got to meet fire with fire, or has he got to cleverly box now? I think that's what he's decided to do, Adam. Uh, I think he realises he can't outbox this man at long range, so he's just going to bite the bullet, get up close, but uh, he looked to come off second in that little exchange. So often has he been able to box Robert McCracken, an excellent amateur, very unlucky in the ABAs, and controversially beaten by Adrian Dodson, and notched up. 33 wins before walking into key pose. Looking for the uppercut inside McCracken, and he's got a proud heart, a warrior's heart. But Eastman also with that shot, the uppercut. Trading between the pair. Eastman, as well, has been quick and hard to punch, and he's looking a little bit stronger up close as well. He's having the last word in these exchanges here. I think this is the only answer. I think McCracken has to make a point, and he's trying to do that now. Yes, the chess match has gone out of the window. They are meeting together. And it will be last man standing if it goes on at this sort of pace. Right to the body from Eastman, who has the sharper dig. The better punches, the uppercuts raining in on Robert McCracken. This is good work from Howard Eastman. Really out to make a point, and Robert McCracken's going to have to dig very, very deep. 
Well, he's doing that now, Adam, as we expected. He's always had pride. So he's going to need some tonight, I think. Yes, back comes McCracken with four or five punches. And this is very entertaining. We expected a tactical, strategic affair. That we haven't got. But we have got an interesting, heated battle. Both landing with good punches, but I suspect Eastman carries more power and more accuracy. Yeah, but at least in this type of action, McCracken is in there amongst it. At long range, he was coming off second. Maybe come off slightly second in this round here, but at least he's got himself into the fight. Responding and giving Eastman something to think about. Well, if they had disrespect for each other before the fight, they certainly must have some respect for each other after these three rounds. That was a really entertaining session. Look at the punches thrown there and an equal success rate. It was a fantastic round. That was a tremendous round. I'll lean towards Eastman because of the quality of the shots. I thought he had the, the very, very slight edge, but the main thing is uh, McCracken's got himself right back into the fight again, showing grit, determination and pride, showing Eastman he's not going to have all his own way. Much more success there. That's the closest round, and I think that's because it was up close and he drew Eastman into a battle. But you can see the quality of Eastman's shots. That's, that's what swayed the round for me towards this but just that little bit more quality the one thing you can always say about robert mccracken is he will fight till the very end he was down in the first round in a british light middleweight title eliminator against ensley bingham from a huge left hook and he dragged himself up off the floor to stop bingham in the 10th round back in november 92 some nine years ago you can expect the same sort of determination from McCracken tonight. He's been just wild and being paid there with a countering combination from the former British like middleweight champion and Commonwealth middleweight holder. Well, is it possible, Adam, when the pace slows and some of the steam goes out of Eastman's punches, will McCracken's style be more suited to this kind of fight? He's more compact. Good counter punch and he can pick shots from long range. A couple of signs here in the fourth round. Eastman could have problems if this goes to the later stages. Good jabs from Robert McCracken. To back Eastman up. An added ingredient to this is that they have sparred together before. A few years ago when Eastman was on the way up and Robert McCracken called him up and said, come up and spar with me. And he dispensed of his services after a few days. McCracken much more settled now, Adam. Much more settled. Picking his choice, lovely. Just bouncing on his feet now, Robert McCracken. Spearing out the jab as Eastman wildly lunges to the body. really good this isn't it but you wonder who who were more suited if they go into the trenches here in the later rounds maybe maybe mccracken more suited to that kind of fight eastman who says that nobody has really wanted to fight him in england defended against derek wormold the british title he won up in Manchester against the ancient Viking Steve Foster. And now he's got somebody who's out of the top draw in domestic boxing in Robert McCracken. Well, Eastman's given up the idea of trying to dominate McCracken. He's trying to slip the punches at long range now. Look, but more cuteness in his work, which is what's required here. I think he's tried to blast McCracken out. It hasn't worked. This is plan B we're seeing. A short left hook still coming into play for Eastman. That should possibly to turn south for he's done that a few times. He looks more motivated than usual, Eastman. And so he should be. Trying to stop McCracken getting in range. 
McCracken had the better first half of the round, no doubt about it. Welcome back to a much anticipated fight here. And punches landed Eastman slightly ahead, although that was McCracken's last round. Plenty of boxing people at ringside tonight. Clinton Woods, Wayne Alexander, I've seen Crawford Ashley. Everybody has been waiting for this one. This is a trade fight. We've got two guys here who don't want to chase these top and state the world titles. They've, they've taken the proper route. They always have done. And that the titles are the state for their quality titles. Robert McCracken in the blue trunks of his beloved Birmingham City. Two down on Jim's card. Unofficial, remember. McCracken in his 35th fight. Only lost one. Howard Eastman never been beaten in 31 starts with 28 knockouts. Kraken's job scoring early. As he needs to try and pile up the points with this jab, McCracken. There's been a shift, hasn't there? He's got the centre of the ring now. And more confidence than McCracken's what now? He's been trying to blast him out, it didn't work. So now he's got a little foothold. The best round of the fight so far for him was the previous round, the fourth. So maybe he got his confidence and maybe start working better. Yes, although Eastman has got that 90% knockout record, he's never looked a dynamic puncher. Certainly not a one-punch knockout artist. He's been clever and thrown punches when he's needed to. Just walked into an uppercut from McCracken. He's been trying to sucker him onto the left hook here, I think, trying to draw him forward with McCracken coming forward, but just careful of what he's doing. As he's tucking up very well, Robert McCracken. And the jabs are landing as Eastman drops his guard. As he got respect for McCracken's punch power. 21 knockouts for the Birmingham man. Can this jab win in the fight? Well, it's the right tactics that I've always said, the jab, the best punch in the book, it breaks people down, breaks their concentration and stops them getting set. But McCracken gets it working as he is now, gets him right back in the fight again. There's that left hook you were talking about that Eastman's trying to use, sucker McCracken in, but he's being first with the right hand and he just shakes his head there. So just say he was bothered by something. I think it was like uh, the stain that McCracken, meaning the punch didn't trouble me. I think that was the expression we saw then. Very light on his feet, but he's been beaten to the jab, Howard Eastman. And he's been pushed around, he's been bullied. This was not in his script. Tries to come back with uppercuts. McCracken is boxing very well. He looks to the floor, Eastman. He is an odd character. I think that was an old man trick. I think uh, McCracken was supposed to do likewise and then uh, eat a left hook there. That was an old man trick we saw from Eastman there, didn't work. Even glance towards us at ringside. Totally self-confident, Howard Eastman. Believes in everything, but Robert McCracken is coming back into this. The two brothers patiently watching on the left of your screens. Gilbert Eastman finds out tomorrow about his British board license after a medical query whether he can fight against Spencer McCracken who I think we've probably seen the last of after his failed welterweight challenge to Harry Darmy. He did announce his retirement but both so eager for their man to prevail in this British Commonwealth and European middleweight clash. Howard Eastman remembering the white and yellow trucks from Battersea in South London meeting arch-rival from the King's Heath area of Birmingham, Robert McCracken, the 32-year-old who is now training the likes of Dave Walker and Leo O'Reilly, who are ringside to support him. People questioning his ambition. Well, he is showing that he still wants to be a part of top boxing, and he's doing really well. Yeah, he's got himself right back in here. This must be the best he's felt since the first bell. Eastman flicking with that jab. I think he's looking for the right hand of the left hook. He's not using it as the powerful jab that he possesses. He's flicking with it, just using it as a range finder. He's not working as hard as he was in the first three rounds, Eastman. He's letting McCracken beat him to the punch. 
I'm wondering if Eastman thought maybe we would have had him tracking out of there by now. Looking very ragged at this moment. As he certainly went out like a steam train, Howard Eastman, with so much to prove. Agitated because he wasn't sure whether his British and Commonwealth titles would be on the line here. They are. And also the weight thing. First time I've ever seen him nervous before a fight. Kraken, who is just boxing very sensibly, and said he's in far better shape than he was for Keith Holmes. Just walks into an uppercut, and Eastman leers at him, inviting the Kraken in. But Eastman, not all that adventurous either, Adam. He's becoming a little bit cagey. I think he sees a real tough legs working folding in front of him. Policeman said he's got to go through McCracken. He was upset that he wasn't put in as mandatory challenger for William Joppy's WBA crown. That goes to Felix Trinidad, who comes up in weight. So he had to take McCracken, and now he's coming back, Howard Eastman. He seems to have finished with the lull. And produces some nice jabs. This is good quality boxing from the pair of them. Yeah, Eastman's got his act back together again. You can see that. He's the happier frame of mind than he was in the previous couple of rounds. The psychological tricks, the hands held aloft, and a Chris Eubank style. And booze from the crowd, who are very pro McCracken. They even booed when they heard Dave Paris was from London, the referee. This is a different form of intimidation we're seeing now from Eastman. Just trying to embarrass McCracken a little bit, pulling faces. But he's getting caught. Stuff. He's getting caught by doing it. This is a very tight affair. Well, they're working on the hand in Howard Eastman's corner, the right arm. John Rooney there just rubbing it, and Darkie Smith. I don't know whether there's a problem with Howard Eastman's right arm. Just have a look at that, Jim. Well, it would seem a muscular thing from what they're doing. I mean, it, it can't be a bone problem. It, it can't be. I wouldn't imagine. He's maybe jabbed his wrist or something like that. Don't, obviously, it's not a knuckle problem. Second half of a very entertaining, absorbing fight here at the Wembley Conference Centre. Howard Eastman starting strong. And McCracken just giving ground there. Well, that, there is a problem with Eastman's arm, and he wants to go for broke. This is a much quicker, improved Eastman. And McCracken's going to have to weather this storm. So Paris says, stop boxing. No talking, no goading. He doesn't want that. We don't need it, do we? Oh, no, we don't need it. The, the, the only thing Eastman's done that I have never liked in his career is that silly carry on at the, the ringside with, with McCracken. That was all his doing, and there was no style. He offered him the glove, McCracken wouldn't take it. And he moves up in level, Howard Eastman. He suddenly springs into a really class fighter. Well, he has all the moves, all the flashy stuff. Eastman is more kind of straightforward. It's, sorry, McCracken moved straightforward down to earth in his style. McCracken, who's had such an up-and-down career, despite only having that one defeat, he looked terrible against Martin Smith, a Brendan Ingle tricky fighter. Back in April of 93, also struggled a bit with Andy Till. He looked terrible against Paul Wesley. And the Birmingham journeyman unlucky not to win the British belt that night. McCracken won the Lonsdale title, but then he's looked very good at times against Lonnie Beasley in the Napoleon Pit. It worries me that he can have two fights in two years. He may have suffered some injuries, but a fighter who's chasing a world title does not fight twice in two years. That's not how you go about it. Absolutely. Twice since that Halloween night when he fought on the Nassim Hamad Wayne McCulloch undercard. And taken his career to America for a while under the tutelage of Fel Torrance and Kenny Crooms in the Nevada Partners gym just outside Las Vegas. Eastman has looked more solid in this round. He's standing his ground a bit more, trying to drive McCracken back. Not so mobile. Looking a little bit stronger again. Of a worried look on the face of McCracken now. Swelling just underneath the 
Left eye, marking up a bit. Robert McCracken walking into some clever moves from Eastman, who's raised the tempo in this, the seventh round, which is the one he did Steve Foster in. Good uppercut going in. This is quality stuff from Eastman in this round. McCracken getting himself back into the fight, uh, to sign of a champion to get the fella back out again. That's what Eastman's trying to do. McCracken spits fire, but he was outboxed in that session. Well, Darkie Smith, John Rooney, Don Davis in the Howard Eastman corner. He's had so many trainers. He was with Ronnie Davis for a while. The man he said he fights for is Tony Mancini, a former trainer who died, who told him, Howard, be patient. It will all come to you. Will it? Well, it certainly came together in the last round there. He's been boxing well tonight. In full credit to McCracken, who a couple of times has dragged himself right back into it again. So that was a lovely round of boxing from Eastman. Picking shots, clever shots. His defensive boxing was nice. Slipping the leads. What a lovely uppercut there. The Bracken, quicker off his stool than Eastman. Who's going to tire first? Again, Eastman tries the very fast start to the round, as he has done in the majority of these. But all three domestic titles on the line here. It's really, I suppose, a world final eliminator. Because Eastman's in line and McCracken could get right back in line if he's successful. Look at these punches going in from both men. How much they want this. Well, that's what I expected to see from McCracken. Just sheer pride. Never say die. He's very upset about criticism of him looking lethargic and not wanting it enough against Keith Holmes well he certainly wants it here see this is what he didn't show against Keith Holmes eh? he seemed to resign himself that he was losing and he just carried on sort of box behind Holmes for some reason but uh, this is far different this is what you expect to see from him this is a big chance maybe the last big chance and he's going for it he's a take loose on the left hand glove of Robert McCracken which Dave Paris takes to the corner Eastman goes to the neutral corner. Takes a few deep breaths and just listens to John Rooney who says, keep the jab out. Keep the jab out, Howard. Tommy Lynch and Paddy Lynch and Don Argerson all in the corner of Robert McCracken. He's left Bell Torrance and gone back to his roots. <laughs> and there's Howard doing his hair to camera. Look at that, touching gloves. Mutual respect between these two men now. No nasty stuff anymore. Bracken trying to back Eastman up. Maybe he believes that Eastman just takes breathers. He can be lazy. He's working well to the body there, Eastman off the ropes. criticism of Eastman possibly is can he box to a pace for 12 rounds he's being forced to well no signs of anything lacking and he's, he's punching at the moment and this has been a pace right from the first bell both are still looking in excellent shape that's the lever really flying when they get close on the inside and the jabs working so well on the outside neither giving ground no knockdowns, but intense action. Good right hand from Eastman. McCracken flies back. Then Eastman just puts in those sharper, harder combinations. They just have a bit more added quality and freshness to them. Yeah. A little bit flashier to Eastman's work. The digging body shots now, the two of them. Maybe believing that the other struggles at the weight. 
This is probably the toughest round of the fight so far. This is the, the round they could turn it one way or the other. Does look very grueling, and McCracken's got a bit of a resigned look as he goes back to the blue corner. What are they going to say? Well, he's fired up. I think they've just got to keep firing him up. We've got three of them talking in there. I don't know how good that will be. We saw with Nassim Hamad having Oscar Suarez in one ear, Manny Stewart in the other. Is that going to help him? Well, at this stage in this type of fight, it's not really tactics you're looking for a great advice. It's just pump them up. Remember about the family at home, the kids who are watching this, uh, what failure is going to mean. Just that type of thing, just to get them pumped up. Yes, it's baby daughter Madeline, Robert McCracken's young girl, girlfriend Karen, who has another child on the way. Teacher Karen always by Robert's side. Real family man, says boxing's a business. He's taken a full minute respite. But there's rather a tired look about him as Eastman fires out for round nine. Is it just a question of Eastman being the man on the way up? And McCracken, who's had that world opportunity already, just striving for one more chance. Eastman's actually doing a real good job because McCracken got himself right back into the fight in the, the, the fourth and fifth rounds. So I think Eastman, realising this, raised the pace a little bit, just grit his teeth, trying to get him back out of it again. You've got him four up on the card. I have Eastman three in front. General feeling around ringside is that Eastman is doing enough, but it's close, and it's been closely fought. A couple of rounds that have been very difficult to score, but the quality at times Eastman just shades it the Maka. Did Robert McCracken just wait too long by hiding away in America? And coming back and just missing the boat with his world title opportunity. He was a good champion, Keith Holmes, who's now in line in that middleweight unification to fight Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Don King having all four together. If they get one winner, well, wouldn't that be lucrative for the victor of this one? People wanted to know whether Howard Eastman was the true article, the real thing. Left eye closing of Robert McCracken. And there's a more of a desperate feel to his work now. But this lets us go. We ask questions uh, about Eastman, can he do it the hard way? Well, he's proving tonight he can. This is a real tough battle. Yes, and Eastman looks relatively fresh. He's worked really hard, he's fought adversity. He had a difficult childhood, having been brought up in Guyana. And lived on the streets and in hostels around London. Was a troubled teenager, but he dedicated himself to the sport, was a decent amateur, and came onto the professional scene pretty late on in March 94. He's been catching up and will target this round again. Be another tough round, close round, but again, Eastman's worked that little bit better. And his jabs come back into it more as well, Eastman. For three or four rounds in the middle, McCracken had his working. He bravely comes through at the final bell. My word, he's trying hard, Robert McCracken. Just the added ingredient in the armory of Eastman is paying off here. Look how many punches thrown, over a thousand. But Eastman landing maybe 40 more. Well, that probably reflects my card, but uh, I mean, punches landing, there's not much of a difference between them. I just feel in some of the rounds, Eastman's at higher quality. But uh, full credit to McCracken, he's gripped his teeth, he's bite the bullet and he just keeps firing in there. What a tough fight this is as good as we hoped it would be. It's slightly different. Maybe 
even more intense than we expected. Can Robert McCracken muster himself over these last nine minutes with the blue and white trunks of the Birmingham fighter in his 35th outing at the age of 32? How much now is left in the tank? He walks onto a good right hook from Eastman, which has been catching McCracken most of the night. And now the Ballasy bomber works the body. Is he starting to break him up? McCracken looked very weary at the start of that round. He's been staying in his stool right to the bell, but he looked very weary as he got up. His legs really sagged there, Jim, after that right hook. And Howard Eastman feels he can finish it now. He's got it. He's got him measured on the end of that jab. And McCracken, at the moment, has little answer. I think he feels the strength. And Eastman's work, that's the big difference. McCracken can't seem to find that same strength. It was the 11th round when McCracken's world title dream fell apart. Stopped on a cut eye, but really beaten all the way. Is it going to be a round earlier? Where his British Commonwealth middleweight and probably future dreams go. He rallies back. This is gritty work from Robert McCracken, but he's being outdone by the sheer quality of Howard Eastman. He's hanging in there, McCracken. Oh, right right up up. Cut. Fantastic shot from Eastman, and McCracken is down on one knee, he looks at his corner. He bravely gets to his feet, and Eastman's been throwing that punch all night, but that was the first time it really McCracken's head back. He looks as though he's spent. There's nothing left. He's he corner to the corner. It's over. And Howard Eastman has the win of his life. The acid test is answered. And Howard Eastman becomes the European middleweight champion and retains his British and Commonwealth belts in the fight of his career where he has answered all of his critics. And big respect too to Robert McCracken who fought every inch of the way. Yeah, I think they both proved the point tonight. Robert McCracken again proving the proudest fighter that in the game. He was never quite, his corner asked him did he want to quit, he said no, he turned round. I think the corner just decided not enough is enough. And referee Paris agreed with it. Nice corner, I like to see that happening. And look at the two of them now. Well, it's mutual respect now. I mean, they've been through the war together. But that was a sickener of a shot. At this stage in the fight, when he's tiring, he's taking a lot of big shots, the fight was beginning to tilt away from him. I think he knew he couldn't get it back together again. And that sickener comes right up through the guard. Don't see it coming. Bang on the chin. He was just starting to almost tire and, 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 and give up a little hope. Well, he actually the started the previous round, the, 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 the final round, looking tired as though he wished it was over. Things were going against him. I don't. I think he knew himself he couldn't turn the back round, but he wouldn't quit. He got up off his stool. But I think, I get, looking at him, I think he would rather have been somewhere else. And that was a real sick enough to finish the job. Look at him struggle there, Robert McCracken. So much he wanted to go on. Looking at his corner, but enough was enough. Break you off, break you off. Uh, and Howard Eastman has the 32nd win of his career and the best. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Michael McCann has recorded a time of 1 minute 54 seconds of the 10th round. Referee Dave Paris has stopped the contest. Kraken in no position to continue. Your winner, and the British and Commonwealth, and the new European middleweight champion from Battersea, the Battersea Bomber, Howard Eastman. And ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation for a very game challenger from Birmingham, Robert Macraca. Now to present the European Championship belt, we call upon our fight supervisor, Mr. Simon Block. Three big titles for Howard Eastman, and it might only be the start. Richie Woodall, how did you see that? Uh, well, he's answered, for me, he's answered all the questions uh, that needed to be answered. In all credit to Howard Eastman, he did a good job tonight. Robert, I think, ringing activity was, was the biggest problem for him. But all, play, all full credit to Eastman, he did a good job. Barry McGregor. 
I think it's only with experience we gain uh, how good, uh, we, we learn how good a guy is. We always question whether or not he had two styles of fighting. Tonight he showed us that. He was brilliant. He could box, he could fight, he punched up close. Those finishing punches were absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's a world-class fighter. 